Meave had stopped and was removing packed ice from her mare's fetlocks when Gabor Zigrin approached. The dwarf squatted at the queen's side, glanced about quickly, then started speaking in a barely audible whisper. Your Majesty, I overheard some folk talking in the smithy. Birdies claim there's treasure, true riches, in the hills near Blackbrook Vale, south of here. Stowed away there. And nobody dares go looking for it on account of beasts that have made their lairs there. But you've got a wee army behind you. I reckon you can try. Might be worth the risk, eh? The Queen brushed the snow from her knees, and raising a hand against the glaring sunlight, peered towards the mountains. Though tempted, she had doubts. To start, the rocky scree at their feet warned clearly of avalanches. I shall think on it, she answered, before vaulting into her saddle. The rumors Gabor had overheard were true. Scouts returned with news of a cavern at whose mouth lay rotted logs, an indication that something of great weight may have been rolled inside. Chests full of gold, for instance. Then again, poor tracks clearly showed some beasts had made the cave their home. Right. Decision time. Enter, or scramble back down, said Gascon, rubbing his hands together for warmth. Please, hurry. This frost is downright biting. The Queen concluded that venturing into the cave represented far too great a risk. So she ordered her force to retreat. Her men, displeased that they had climbed so high in vain, spoke ill of the adventure all the way down into the pass. The treasure had become the Queen's obsession, this was clear, for she once again let down her company at the entrance to the cavern. We've scaled this high. Foolish we'd be to descend empty-handed. Fall in behind me! The Queen took the four, sword in one hand, torch in the other. The flickering flame's glow illuminated the cave's interior, casting long shadows. Meave was certain some horror would leap at her at any moment. And she was not at all wrong. Anyone you struggle with strong reservations when entering monster-infested pits? Uh, asking for a friend. Treasure trove ought to be close now. Come on. As soon as the last beast had fallen, the Lyrians took to seeking out the treasure. Soldiers dispersed throughout the caverns in a rush, penetrating every last corner. Finally, one called out. Got it! Got the treasure! Right here! Treasure! Shiny stuff! A number of steel-reinforced chests lay up against the cavern wall. Meave blew the dust from the lid of one and lifted it with some difficulty. She had hoped for gold and jewels, bars of Mahakaman steel at the least. Instead, she saw thousands of time-tarnished copper coins with a hole through their centre. What's this bloody crap? Tokens of some sort? Uh, aye, that's right. Holy Goldens, we call them. They're, uh, currency in Mahakam. Get our wages in them. Use them to cop victuals and hooch. What of arms, armour, tools? Nah, all oh, that's given to us. Clan provides it. Is that what you need? Weapons, or oh, feel the agent, uh, brought you here for no reason. Yet these tokens, they can be exchanged for other coin, can they not? To Merian Orans or Novigrad crowns? Aye, doable in theory. But not at all clever. Rates are crap. See, the elders keep them low to make life difficult for dwarven folk. Discourage them from leaving Mahakam. What's this? Common dwarves use no gold? You cannot be serious. Yet I am. What good's gold to them? Clan gives them all they need. And victuals and hooch beyond need they get for tokens. Yet you trade with humans. Gold coin you take for your goods, the coin must serve a purpose. What is it? We hoard it all. In vaults. Great piles. Down bottom lie ducats dating from the reign of that dozy ham shanker, King Dagrid. And you do not put it to use? Acquire anything for it? Then it's true what folks say, that you love gold too much to part with it. Hoard it for pleasure, as dragons do. Point of fact. 
That there's pure drivel. Gold's a metal like any other, just yellow. We hoard it for our safety. Your safety? I fear again, I simply don't follow. Couldn't it be simpler? Soon as human folk get it in their heads, we's a thorn in their side, we'll spend it. All of it, in a jiffy. Excess coin supply, that's called. Matter of days, gold will be worth less than sawdust. And you're tossing banks and economies, bam, on their arses. There'll be nothing left of them. They'll cave in faster than a mine shaft with rotten props. Why are you all ogling me? With human folk for neighbours, we dwarves got to be damn vigilant. As sheep round wolves. So how can these tokens serve me? We must trade them. Even should we get a pittance, it will be something. The soldiers demand their pay. Ah, your bums out the windy. Fighting men want full dixies and tankards a hooch. Coins but a means to that end. What do you suggest then? As I've been saying, the tokens we use to purchase nourishment and mead, and what you've got in those chests, why, that'll do to fund a feast the likes of which Mahakam's not seen since Brewer was sworn in as Elder in Chief. The fighting men'll eat and drink their fill, carouse about and forget their due and pay right quick, and invite the local dwarves to feast with you, and the clans'll look kinder on you too. True. Leaders must look after the morale of their troops. Yet they must care all the more for how they are equipped. With arms, shields, armour. And such care requires coin. Trade these tokens you must, Reynard. While you, Gabor, when next a rumour of treasure or aught else you catch, learn the particulars before you bring me word. It took much effort to carry the laden chests down the mountain. Meave's men panted and groaned and stopped every few steps to rub their aching hands. I'd have liked nothing more than to say the effort was worth it, and the treasure of tokens helped fortify the army for their upcoming battle against Nilfgaard. Alas, a rather small coin pouch sufficed to fit the gold Meave got for the contents of the six mammoth chests. Caution be damned! Your Grace. I feel obliged to remind you we are at war with Nilfgaard, and every copper... Should go to building our army, I know. But we live but once, Reynard. Sir Gabor, take the tokens, and arrange me a feast so grand that Ebdahi himself shall hear us revel. As Meave's force could not possibly fit in a tavern, the feast was laid out in a storehouse. Crates arranged in rows served as tables and benches, while the windows were festooned with lion's foot and pasque flower. Great barrels of mead, cognac and vodka were rolled in, and when the soldiers saw this, they broke out in cheers and laughter that lasted till dawn. Pour us another round, you lovable Lyrian bastards! <laughs> For he's a jolly good fair... Uh, sorry, a jolly good dwarf! There was food and drink enough for the dwarves of the pass, who, with Meave's men, raised tankards in hand and voices in song the night through. To see them sharing tales and playing cards, one would not believe that anywhere down the mountains, through woods and across plains, humans and dwarves might, for the softest slight, leap at each other, murder in their eyes. <laughs>